Hello everyone, this is Professor Smith and in this video I'm going to give you a little overview of currencies. So what I have here on my e-whiteboard is a diagram of a country that is either exporting a good or service or importing it. And the way I always remember it is X means out and M means in. So an export is a sale of a good or service to another country and the country would receive money currency from the foreign uh, buyer of that export. Now, now instead, suppose the country is importing the good or service, it's going to have to pay money for that. So money is going to be leaving the economy. So the currencies are often exchanged and the price at which one currency is exchanged for another is logically enough called an exchange rate. So the way to think about an exchange rate is it's simply the number of units of one currency per unit of another currency. Okay. Now to kind of go beyond what you would just be reading in a textbook, I like to teach my students what are the actual currencies of the world and we'll look at some actual data. So what I have here is a site that lists basically every major currency in the world. Every single currency has a code, a three digit, you could call it um, just set of symbols or just the code. So for example, the US dollar is called the USD. Okay. Let me just give you a couple other kind of uh, randomly chosen ones here. How about um, the yen in Japan? That goes by the JPY. Okay, so there's there it is. How about the Mexican peso? That's MXN and so on and so forth. Now to work with a exchange rate you need two currencies put together because you need the number of units of one currency per unit of another. So again let me kind of go beyond the textbook and just kind of show you some actual what we call currency pairs and their exchange rate. So here in Google what I typed in as a starting example was USD JPY. So the way that you interpret this we know USD is US dollar, JPY is Japanese yen. When you combine the two codes like this, the way you interpret it is it's the number of units of the currency on the right for one unit of the currency on the left. So the USD JPY exchange rate right now, the actual literal market exchange rate is 130.55 yen per dollar. Now a critical concept in exchange rates is understanding whether the currency is what we call appreciating, that means it's getting stronger in value, or whether it's depreciating, getting weaker in value. Now take a look at this little graph that Google gives you right here. This is the exchange rate value on the vertical axis graphed over time and notice how you can go back a year or a month, but let's just take this one month. A month ago, one dollar was worth about 136 yen. Today, one dollar is worth only 130.55 yen. So in this example, the dollar has weakened and that means the yen has strengthened or appreciated. Okay, so if one currency depreciates, the other must appreciate. Let me give you one, a uh, couple other examples of that. Okay, so here is EUR, that's the Euro, USD. Okay, so again, remember it's the number of units of currency for the code on the right, for the currency on the right, for one unit of currency on the left. So this is number of US dollars per one Euro. Okay, so right now that exchange rate, okay, one Euro, is worth 1.08 US dollars. Now again, let's take a look at the one month trend. About a month ago, okay, one euro was worth 1.08 USD. It looks like there's an upward trend in the graph. So if I look at the most current value, one euro is now worth a higher amount, 1.08 USD. Okay, so in this case, the euro has gotten more valuable over the month. So we say that the euro has appreciated or strengthened, and that means the dollar 
as depreciated or weakened. Okay. Now you can put any two currencies together. So for example, here is what we call the Euromex, number of Mexican peso per euro. And I can see it looks like there was a slight strengthening of the euro and a weakening of the peso. Now just a couple other things I'm going to introduce in this video. <clears throat> On the Blackboard side, I've given us a currency converter page. So let's suppose, for example, we wanted to convert Maybe you're going to go to, let's say, Japan, and you're going to spend a bunch of yen, and you have $1,000 of spending money, so you're going to have to sell those dollars and buy yen in order to spend the yen at that exchange rate. So on the currency site that's on Blackboard, what you would do is, let's say, the you're going to use 130.55, okay? And let's suppose I have 1,000 U.S. dollars. Okay, so I want to convert a thousand US dollars to yen. I would put 1,000 in the box amount to exchange, and then I type in the exchange rate that I'm given. So if it's 130.55 yen per dollar, I would click calculate. I would enter that first and then click calculate. Okay, so this tells me that with my 1,000 USD, I would be able to buy 130,550 yen. Now what's kind of neat, neat about this is you can go in the opposite direction. So if you had a thousand units of the yen and you wanted to know how much is that worth in US dollars, it's basically a reciprocal calculation. Okay? And you would get seven dollars and about sixty-six cents um, rounded to two decimal places. So that's kind of a nifty calculator that you can use to figure out how much uh, one currency is worth in terms of another. Now, why do we care so much about whether or not a currency is weakening or strengthening? Well, there are kind of winners and losers. There's different impacts on the economy. Let's take the case when an economy is depreciating, its currency is depreciating relative to another. Okay, so let me give you an example of that. Let's go back and look at USD JPY. Okay, we know today it's 130.55. Suppose we wake up tomorrow and it's only 120.55. Okay, that would be an example of the U.S. dollar weakening or depreciating against the yen. The yen would have been strengthening. So how would that, how would an, an overnight depreciation of the dollar, for example, affect the economics of the USA? Well, the biggest thing to know is that a cheaper currency benefits your exporters. Okay, think of it this way. Let's go back again and look at the USD JPY example. For every dollar of U.S. goods, if the Japanese buyer only has to give up, let's say, 120 of their yen compared to 130.55, the good is going to be cheaper. So that's going to stimulate our exports to Japan. Okay, So typically, a depreciated currency will actually benefit your exporters. Okay. It will also benefit the domestic uh, tourist industry because that means foreigners' currencies will go uh, farther. Okay. This can actually improve an economy's net export balance, which we know is a plus to GDP. Okay, so a cheaper currency um, can actually boost your economy's GDP. Everything is kind of the reverse. So who loses when the currency is weaker? If you buy a lot of imports, okay, because again, now your uh, currency um, if you are a local currency, you're going to have to be giving up more of your weaker currency to buy a foreign good. If you are living, uh, working abroad, your money is not going to go as far. And there's a bunch of other um, effects on imports. So that's kind of why we care about whether a currency is appreciating or depreciating. Now, in terms of what causes appreciation or depreciation, we're going to be learning two theories. There's going to be a supply and demand approach and another approach called purchasing power parity. But I think that is plenty to absorb for this video. So I will see you guys in another video and you can read about those last two things on Blackboard or the text.